Hello and welcome back to Shelf Centered. This is Bryce and I've got the ending, the final one, the final tier list for my entire, everything that I've read of science fiction up to this point. Though I shouldn't say, I should say up to the point that I started the list because it's probably missing a couple since I started putting these out. But anyway, without further ado, please like and subscribe and let's just jump into it. All right, this is getting a little bit unruly, so we're kind of all over the place uh, with, well, just with the books just filling up all of these areas. So uh, let's see. Metatropolis is next. Metatropolis, uh, sadly, is going way down here. It's somewhere toward the bottom. I'm happy to put it there. It's like an anthology. It, what led me to it was... John Scalzi was one of the authors. There's Jay Lake. There's all these authors in it. The best short story in it was like real middle of the road. And then it just was worse from there. So I was just not a big fan. All right, Mirrored Heavens. This is an interesting one. Uh, Mirrored Heavens, if you've never heard of this, which I don't talk to a lot of people that have... David J. Williams writes just about the most fast-paced book I've ever read, and it's it's to the extent of of being too fast-paced. It's almost like it just it, it it's too much, and you can barely even really keep up. And it's constantly switching view paint, viewpoints. I mean, sometimes even within the page, it is crazy. Uh, but I have fond memories of it. I thought it was a really interesting look, and and it just kind of worked for the story. And it was unique, right? Those things did it for me. It wasn't like the best uh, book I've ever read. So uh, I think maybe bottom of B, because so it was still a solid entry. And I think I liked I liked the sequels because it's a trilogy. I like them better. All right, Monsters of Men. Funny enough, uh, the only one of that trilogy that I've actually read because it was for uh, <laughs> I was a judge. In uh, for an award, for a book award, I don't even remember what the award was by this uh, at this point, uh, but it's definitely science fiction, and uh, ended up Kraken ended up winning, but this was up there, uh, Kraken by by China Miaville, which was awesome, uh, but Monsters of Men, so it's kind of like I guess maybe it was fantasy and science fiction because I'm like Kraken is more like urban fantasy. Anyway, I <laughs> I'm constantly getting sidetracked. Uh, Monsters of Men though is really good. Uh, the Chaos Walking series. There's a book. There's a book. There's a movie with uh, what's his face Spider Man in it, Holland, and uh, so it's obviously pretty popular. I really like this though. It was really fun. Um, let's see where are we going with it. Um, probably mid B tier. I really liked it. Uh, maybe not quite. <laughs> I keep finding okay. Maybe it's not good as those. Uh, there we go. Um, there we go. <laughs> It's getting too full. B tier is just ridiculous. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, lower B tier, that's fine. Uh, let's see, Old Man's War. Old Man's War, I really love. That's what This what started my um, really just putting Scalzi to the top of my list. Uh, I'm going to go with at least A tier for Old Man's War, John Scalzi. This is kind of an older cover, I think. I think that might actually be fair. Just end of uh, A tier. I really, really liked it. It was such a cool concept that just blew me away and then the, just the writing and uh it was just really good really uh fast paced um but not too fast paced like <laughs> like mirrored heavens uh and and just you know witty banter and whatnot uh, i didn't love the sequels as much but i still liked them all right this is an interesting one only forward by michael marshall smith this is an interesting one because i was told uh, a goodreads friend and he can't even remember at this point um, it's definitely A tier. I got to figure out where in A tier, um, but just an interesting take on <laughs> on a concept that I, I don't, I can't spoil. It's either you get it and you go along with it, or you get it and you just are like, "This is too stupid." I I, I could see either way, and and both are very much uh, uh, they they make sense for me. It just. I, I almost didn't get it, and I almost gave up on the book. And this is going to be the weirdest way to say I love this book, but I almost gave up, and then I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't, uh, just because the concept in it was like, really? But then you're like, okay, that's an interesting way to take that. All right, I like it. 
So I'm going to go, I think, man, yeah, I'm up here right behind Rendezvous with Rama. I, I really liked it. It's, it's a weird one, but it works. It's like this detective mystery uh, in this future world. All right, uh, have you seen a recent video of mine? Uh, my po po position on Otherland. Otherland and Tad Williams, I, I struggle with. I, I enjoyed this book, The, the City of Golden Light, and the, the, even the sequel, River of Blue Flame, I think. Uh, I, I enjoyed them, but not enough to read two more in the tetralogy, which I just learned. Thank you, kind commenter, um, of the, the four-book series, Tetralogy, uh, and I wanted to call it Quad, Quadrilogy or something, something stupid. Uh, but uh, this was one that uh, I just, it was so many pages for so little to happen, and then, I, and then I was like, okay, I'll give it one more book, and then it was, again, I liked it and the ending was good, but it was still like, we've only gotten this far to our goals or whatever, and we're almost 2,000 pages in. This is kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to go with uh, Upper C um, because I did, if I can get, I think it, I'm going to go top of C because I did actually enjoy it, and that's what I'm, I'm why... I could say overrated <laughs> in my last video or one of my recent videos. And uh, because that's where it is. It's just, it wasn't enough though to, to keep me going. All right, Ready Player One, absolutely loved. Uh, can I acknowledge it's got some plenty of issues, fine, uh, but I really liked it. Uh, the, man, where are we going to put this? Ah, this is hard to do on the spot. Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe up here with The Martian, because it kind of reads the same, just fun, you know, go, 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 go. The the 80s-ness of Ernest Cline's world makes sense in that one. But uh, then we get to Air Ready Player Two. I don't think I hated it as much as some people did. <laughs> I definitely didn't love it. And maybe at the bottom of C is fine for that. And the reason why usually I've been trying to keep just one kind of entry per series, Ready Player Two is such a different book, but at the same time, the same book. I just felt like it needed its own <laughs> commentary and its own, because they're just at different levels. Like Otherland was, they were at the same level for me. Uh, these were just at such different levels. All right, Recursion. Recursion's really good. Uh, let's see here. I didn't like it quite as much as Dark Matter. But I didn't, it's pretty close to it anyway, though. Um, so I'll just go right by it. Uh, again, Blake Crash is just great with the standalones that they're great and easy to fit in between other things. Um, replay. All right, Replay by Ken Grimwood. This is one that I, I kind of have mixed feelings on. Some of the, the things I didn't love in it, but it is one of those books that has stuck with me for a long time long time. Um, just some of the ideas, uh, I'm definitely going to have to go A tier with it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with A tier, maybe bottom A tier right there. It's just because it's stuck with me. Some of the, the implications where, so it's this guy, it's pretty much Groundhog's Day for science fiction. It's He dies at like, what, age 42 or something, then he keeps, he's like reborn, uh, or reborn, or just back into his like, what, what is it, like 17 to 20 or something year old self. Uh, with, you know, all the knowledge that he contained from previous versions each time. So just like Groundhog Day, and I wonder if that's where they maybe got it. Uh, I forget uh, when each came out. I'll have to look that up. One of just one of the things is like at first he's like, well, I got to get my kids, you know, I got to like follow the same path to get my kids. But then eventually it's like <sighs> then he has to lose his kids. <laughs> each time so then it's eventually like well if this is going to keep going on uh <laughs> might be too much spoilers uh i'm not i'm not going to do it i just that was one facet of it and there's so many more all right now we've got revelation space in the whole real revelation space universe this is one it does help that i sorry just put it there for now because it's getting ridiculous uh revelation space is definitely in there at the top uh s tier Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think S tier at least. We're just <laughs> we may have to change this up, but S tier for sure. 
I read three now. I love them so much. It's such a cool space air arena. I, I love it absolutely. Cannot get enough. Um, it, it just from an actual uh, what is it? A, like astrophysicist or something like that. What is it? just so many good things that I cannot say enough about. If you like science fiction in 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 hard science fiction, he's not going to shy away from science. Uh, the science part of science fiction, but also great stories. Sometimes like like Chasm City is like a good kind of mystery, murder mystery type. Uh, it's just excellently done. Uh, and then, um, let's see, Redemption Arc is the one I just finished and I was just blown away. It's so good. It's so many good things. So many different, like this future that makes sense, that has different kinds of peoples, even kind of some aliens uh, approached and just like kind of some explanations for some scientific uh, theories, let's just say. Uh, obviously fictional, but it's super well done. All right, this is Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> One of the only movie novelizations, if not the only movie novelization. Um, so well done. I'm going to put this so so high. Um, not in B tier, definitely A tier. The question is where. I did not know a movie novelization could be this good. Uh, Matthew Woodring Stover, he's already, I've already put him in S tier for Heroes Die, so you kind of probably know my thoughts on that, but I just, I didn't understand that a, a movie novelization could be this good, and it was, it was so good. It's, it's highly recommended. You've probably seen the movie multiple times, but you should absolutely read this still, because it just, it really gets into the heads of the characters and explains a lot of things really well, but it doesn't like... It's not like the new Star Wars books that I felt like have to explain things that the like <laughs> that the Last Jedi didn't explain. Uh, and it's this is just getting into the into the heads and just making you feel for these characters even more uh, than you did. And that is, you know, it's considered the best of the the prequel trilogy, and I think that's fair. Uh, but novelization wise, man, oh, that's hard to say. This is hard to say. I'm gonna put it up here. Mid A tier, I think that's fair enough uh, for that. All right, Ring World, Ring World by Larry Niven. One of those that I was pretty kind of disappointed in. It's a classic of science fiction. Have to read it pretty much, but it just it, it's it's a bit dated. It's some somewhat sexist. It's kind of hard to read some of the things, and you're like, oh, like I try not to. I'm not one of. The, I'm like not gonna judge. A book from the past based on today, but at the same time, it's still, it still doesn't feel right. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to be like, don't read it or whatever, you know, because it is a classic. It's an interesting concept. Uh, I'm going to go middle C because uh, it's just, it's, it's fine. And eh, maybe not as good as 1984. Um, which is funny because, okay, so this one is, I happen to get a review copy of one of the more recent Ringworld novels because there's been a whole bunch. It's written with uh, Edward M. Lerner right here, Betrayer of Worlds, and I actually really liked it, which is why I thought I would like the original Ringworld a lot more. So I'm actually going to probably go with bottom tier B uh, for that one because I did enjoy it. It was it was cool, kind of some, some interesting concepts. Uh, yeah. All right, Sand Kings by the one and only George R. R. Martin. This is going right to the top. I had to put it there for now. Um, this is up here. Uh, it's best short story I've ever read. It's so good. So it's definitely at the top. You've got to read it. Got to do it. It's worth it. I don't want to explain too much to spoil it. And it's like if it takes you like longer than an hour, I owe you something. And that's coming from me, and I'm a really slow reader. So... <laughs> But I think you, I think it's worth every second. All right, uh, this is as much as you cannot tell what it is. It's the Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut. Let's see here. This is I know I'm throwing a lot in S tier. I just feel like I you know I've I've focused my reading for a reason. But this is going to be S tier. I'll put it at the bottom. Kurt Vonnegut's one of my favorites. This is my favorite of my favorites. So that'll tell you a lot. It's so good. It's so funny. Um, and it's, I could still say chronic, chrono, no, I can't, apparently can't. I can still say 
chronosynclastic infundibulum. At least that's how I pronounced it. But uh, just, <laughs> it's so good. I, I need to reread it because it's just, it's one of those that um, I can't even really tell you much about it other than just my feelings of just joy in reading it and then laughter and, and laughing and having to read people certain portions and sections of it. Which is sad to say because then there's slapstick, which I really struggled with. Um, hmm. Bottom of C, maybe. Maybe it's not as... Uh, down here in the C crowd, in the in the dregs of C. There we go. That's fair enough. Um, slapstick just didn't do it for me. It wasn't... It, and maybe because there's this thing that Vonnegut does in like... I think every book that I've read where he kind of has this one kind of theme or just a saying or a couple words or one word, uh, everyone knows, as I'm going to get to in a second, Slaughterhouse Fives, well, most people know, so it goes, right? Uh, I see that anywhere. I know what that means, right? Uh, you know, when other people even reference it. Uh, slapsticks, I forget, was like ho-hum or something. Um, so you start to go, okay, uh, <laughs> Can we just not rely on that? Like it was, it was hilarious in plenty of books, and it was greatly well used in in Slaughterhouse Five. But slapstick just felt like we're doing this again. <laughs> um, so Slaughterhouse Five, like I said, I I liked it, but I did not like it as much. I don't know. I'm still I'm kind of mid B tier. Um, let's see here, maybe right there. I enjoyed it, but I did not love it. And again, my expectations might have been out of whack a little bit because I love Sirens of Titan. Um, and so I read that one pretty quickly. And I love if, I don't know if I have it, but Cat's Cradle, I forget if I put already. I might have. I like Cat's Cradle more. All right, there we go. And I think that's fair. It's definitely under, see, look at it. I didn't even, <laughs> I thought I was still having to get to uh, Cat's Cradle and Breakfast of Champions. I definitely put them in the right place. With with uh, Slaughterhouse Five being like duly noted, it is a classic for a reason. It was it was good, uh, just you know not the favorite of all the Vonnegut's that I have read. Uh, another one that I thought was overblown, overrated, uh, Snow Crash. This is one I just didn't get, and I fully admit it. It was on me. I'm sure plenty of people got it. It felt a little dated too. On top of it, I know there's like this some kind of humor to naming your main protagonist hero protagonist, uh, but it just felt like a little too much of a joke of itself. Anyway, um, I think I can fairly put it ahead of some of these, but right behind is 1984. Maybe there we go. All right, then we got Songs of the Dying Earth. This is a George R. R. Martin uh, anthology that he put together in celebration of Jack Vance's Dying Earth. This is easy. Uh, it's so it's an anthology. I think I actually like more, and I know <laughs> more than the Dying Earth. Here, there we go. I have Dying Earth down here. I absolutely loved this anthology. So we're gonna go lower. Lower S tier is fair, uh, but. And do I love that. It's so well done. The, the stories in it are amazing. And one of the reasons why I still give Tad Williams a chance because his novella in that is amazing. It's so good. Uh, but the whole thing, there's just there's not one bad story. There's, there's better stories and then blow your mind. So like I said earlier, uh, at least one point in one of these videos, <laughs> I've tried to keep just one book out of the series unless there's just such a difference and this is one of those speaker for the dead is so different from ender's game um that it it's hard to it, i had to put them both in they're just so different from each other but they're so good in their different ways i did like ender's game more i don't know if i could put speaker on the level of s tier but i can definitely put it on a tier uh and let's see right there in upper middle uh, because it's so good. It's such a good, uh, interesting idea on, um, I don't know, just like compassion, a lot of things like that. Uh, and it just well done, but in such a different, it's like a mystery as opposed to uh, battle school and Ender's Game, you know, a training and montage almost. And, and this is, you know, speaker's a, a mystery. All right, Spin by Robert Charles Wilson. This is one of those, again, where... I think I had high expectations that were a little bit dashed. Uh, they just, 
wasn't my favorite ever, uh, and, and this one is, but I don't think it's quite C tier. It was still good. It was an interesting concept. Kind of your whole, the world is like in this like time vortex thing. I know there's like a sequel called Vortex, um, but it's like where time is going like slow, but it's going insanely fast outside of it. And just like what kind of implications that has. And I might have gotten that backwards. I don't think I got that backwards though. Um, and so just interesting concepts. All right, this is Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I don't know why I even threw this in there, to be honest. Uh, it works, I guess. It's the graphic novel. It's it's good. It's nothing crazy. Um, it's got great artwork. Um, I think I can do lower B. Kind of have this habit of just kind of throwing it, throw it at the end, and then we'll deal with it later, but I don't know if I ever will. Lower B is fine. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel uh, is good. It's highly recommended. Um, let's see where are we going to put this one. I think upper A tier because this is it's like science fiction, but literary science fiction. It's hard. There's all these like action books. I'm trying to put it in the middle of. Uh, I think it's A tier though. Um, I'm going to go end of A tier because uh, it's good. It, it it's um, it's just really well done. I don't know if I could put it in S tier though. I'm not even at the front of A tier, but it's really well done. I really enjoyed it. Um, all right, Ted Chang, um, Stories of Your Life and Others. Uh, one of the, I think that's actually the story, Stories of Your Life, is the one that's Arrival, the movie Arrival is based on. Uh, really good. Uh, great anthology of short stories. I think there's a reason. I mean, I feel like the world doesn't buy short stories except very rarely, and it's like Ted Chang's. <laughs> like, and that's it. <laughs> I know that's oversimplifying it, I'm sure. I just know that his are just really up there. Uh, let's see. I can put it upper B tier. Um, actually, that's fair. Maybe um, there we go. Yeah, upper, uh, highly upper B tier. I think that that's a good one. Empire of Silence, Christopher Rocchio, book one in the Sun Eater series. This is an easy, at least A tier, and I hear they even get better. Uh, let's see. I don't think I liked it as well as. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I love this. It was really well done. I'm gonna put it right up there. Uh, a tier, better than Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Not quite as good as uh, Player of Games by Ian M. Banks. I think that's fair enough. It's, I loved it. It was so good. It was one of the best reads of not last year, but the year before. Uh, and that tells you I need to read some more. Superposition by David Walton. Uh, that's an interesting, really, really interesting take. Very scientific. Uh, let's see, probably a mid B tier. Um, upper mid B tier, um, mid B tier. It's good. It's good. Uh, so I, and I still remember a lot from it. It's really interesting. Just the, the kind of plays with that idea of like <laughs> electrons are kind of just a, a cloud. There's just more of a probability <laughs> of where they might be. Uh, they don't just the, the, the thought that like, how does, you know, something that makes up my tangible self have the ability that will have the properties that that like that, that on the little tiniest level beyond microscopic level that they have anyway really fun all right another scalzi there's lots of scalzi because there's lots of like different series that i've read like i said he's an auto buy author for me um do androids dream of electric sheep and this one's the androids dream right so we're talking uh, a little bit about you know the same um uh, a little bit of the same ideas as Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep or Blade Runner, or whatever you want to call it, but the Philip K. Dick novel. Uh, so I, it's been a while, but I remember laughing hysterically over and over again. I remember it being cruder than most of the other books. Um, let's see, but I remember going, yep, yeah, this is up there with the best. So Old Man's War, I'm going to keep it up kind of close to that. I think that's fair. 
Um, not because I'm copying out here. The Forever War, uh, Haldeman, Joe Haldeman. This is one that it was good. I think I had, um, I had it kind of up there because it's got some of the same elements as like uh, um, Starship Troopers kind of thing. I'm not putting it at B. I'm trying to figure out where it needs to go. Uh, I enjoyed it, but not. I think part of it was I wanted to enjoy it more. Um, so I think maybe upper a tier or b tier is going to be fair because i it's good um, but for me it was just not quite what i was thinking here we go this is fair um and again expectations all my faults but there there we are <laughs> the gods themselves isaac asimov um good probably b tier as well got to figure out where in b tier though um Probably above there. That's fair. This is a good. It's a good, interesting concept, as only Asimov does. But just you know, the writing's not there. It's it's just you know, just not as smooth and, and polished a, of a writer. But the ideas. That's what you come to Asimov for, and great with ideas. All right, the Gone Away World by Nick Harkaway, easy A tier. Um, I don't think I can quite get it to S tier. I've loved um, Gone Away World is not the only one. I was wondering, is there another one that I've read on here by Haldeman? This why I should not wait this long before filming another one of these. Um, Angel Maker though is another one that I read by him. Great author, in just crazy nuts. Um, kind of this post-apocalyptic world you end up running into mimes and ninjas and like crazy things but also it all fits together and makes sense and uh just an interesting concept that um to take away from this i'm gonna put it this is a hard one this is a hard one maybe right there uh it's a little arbitrary at this point to be honest <laughs> All right, this is Philip K. Dick. I love, and I put it on the record, I love Philip K. Dick. The problem is I don't love all of his work, and this is The Man in the High ca Castle. Holy cow, I'm going with D tier for this. Uh, maybe upper D, because I don't, I don't know if it's on the same level as the rest, but I guess it is on the same level as the rest. It, I struggled. It was, like, very clearly written based on tea leaves, and... <laughs> If you know anything about it, like the Amazon series was really well done and I loved it. And so maybe I was expecting too much of that. There's some of that, but it's such a different book. It's not, there's no real cohesiveness to it. Uh, and that's what I understand is just one of the concepts is like, you know, these tea leaves in, in, if you know anything about it, it's like, you know, they kind of predicting things and apparently, or making decisions based on them and clearly, uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of making decisions in a book and, ma and writing your book based on readings of tea leaves, <laughs> just saying, or the decisions that they make. All right, this one right here, you can't really tell. Uh, <laughs> who did these? Um, it was me. Uh, I uploaded these, and I don't know why. Some of them really work well, and some of them are just not very clear. Anyway, this is The Reality Dysfunction, Peter F. Hamilton. I've told this before, but... I struggled. I very much struggled with this. And so I'm definitely going, I, I, I enjoyed enough about it to maybe be upper C tier, but it just doesn't, it didn't, it wasn't enough for me to read another thousand page book. This one was a thousand pages. I got about three quarters in and I was like, come on, I'm not, I'm not getting this, am I? Uh, so I restarted it. I did, luckily it was on audio and I thought it was maybe the audiobook narrator, John Lee. I've since realized, I don't think it's John Lee because I've enjoyed uh, John Lee's narration of, uh, of Alistair Reynolds' book. So, um, which I was, I, was, I was a little scared of <laughs> going, oh, come on, it's going to ruin Alistair Reynolds for me now. But it turns out I just apparently didn't like the reality dysfunction. And so I'm worried about, I want to give Hamilton another shot, but I just, this one did not work for me. All right, then we've got The Three-Body Problem by Liu Shikson. I, I'm sorry if I'm mis mispronouncing that. I really enjoyed that. It was really well done. Um, and I need to read the rest of that trilogy. It has been a while. Um, definitely upper, a, upper B tier is fine. I, you know, wasn't, I, I enjoyed it a lot. 
Um, that's actually pretty good where that landed. Um, really interesting uh, concepts about like computer programming even. I took some computer programming classes enough to know that it is not for me. Uh, I am bad at it. <laughs> But really interesting, uh, anyway, utilization of that. And, and anyway. All right, Wesley Chu, I really enjoyed. Um, like The Lives of Tao is a good series. Uh, so I, I picked up Time Salvager. Uh, it's good. It's got a kind of a the middle area on it is not, it's a little slow. But it's still, I want to read the other, the, the, I think there's a sequel. And I don't know if that's the ending of it or if there's more planned. But that's all I know for now, and I think right there, almost direct smack dab in the middle of B uh, tier is good. Um, I've completely abandoned, apparently, my um, <laughs> what I put my titles for these. So, New Found Land, The Long Haul by Austin Grossman. I, Austin Grossman is one I've been meaning to read for a while. Uh, I believe brother of Lev Grossman, one of uh, the authors of one of my favorite series, The Magicians. Uh, this was interesting, good, good, solid. Like it wasn't like blow you away um, or anything, but it was good. It was good. Um, maybe we can do right, um, right there. I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like my favorite thing ever. All right, The Vagrant, there we go, by Peter Newman. Uh, I really love this. This is so good. Um, I don't think we're going to go S tier, but we're going to get into, hmm, this is hard. Um, right here, very upper A tier. That's how much I like that. That was a really good, really good story. Interesting how it's a non-verbal main character, and you you love him. I don't know how. I don't even know how Newman did it. It's <laughs> and then there's other non-verbal beings. <laughs> I won't get too much into it. That you're like, how do I love all of them? All right. Uh, welcome to the Monkey House, Vonnegut. Uh, let's see. There's goods and bad. This one's like a solid B tier because, uh, and I think that's fair to go right there. Um, there's some stories in there that are amazing. So it's just short story collection. Um, some that are amazing, uh, Harrison Bergeron's hilarious, uh, and then there's some that are just like, what was the point of that? Uh, which is pretty much very common to, to, to Vonnegut. Um, so that's my list. That was all of them. Holy cow, I did it. Uh, there you go. One last kind of swoop through here. Let me know if you have any questions on any of these or want me to list them out a little better, maybe uh, in the description or comments. So here we go. This is it. B tier definitely got the most. Let me know if you have any questions or want me to list any of these out a little better because not all of them are very clear. There are some that are pretty clear. Uh, but there you go. I'll go one more time through. Is that what it is? I think I'm happy with this. This is pretty good. Um, I think that's fair how they kind of uh, <laughs> kind of landed here. All right, that was it. How was it? Thank you so much for stopping by. I know that it's, it's it's become a huge list at this point. Uh, I thought I was underread in science fiction, but I, I feel pretty good about it. I feel like I've read quite a bit, uh, quite a few classics there. I still definitely have a long, a long way to go, but I, I'm pretty happy with, with what I've read so far. Um, anyway, please leave a like, subscribe if it's if this is your cup of tea, you know. Thank you so much for stopping by and we'll catch you later. Bye.